So in this video, we're going to talk about finding range. Uh, we've talked about finding domain quite a bit, so in this video, we're going to turn the tables and find the range of this function. Before we do find the range, let's think back to domain and find the domain of this guy. With this one, you can see that you're going to have some issues with dividing by zero. So when finding your domain, you can take your de denominator and see what makes it equal zero. And obviously this one, zero is going to make it easy, equal zero. So your domain is x does not equal zero. Or you could write it in interval notation. I forgot my negative there. Like that. So there's your domain. And again, you don't have to write both of these. You could write one or the other. So now on to the range. Now there's a couple different ways that we're able to find range. You can look at it graphically. You can look at it numerically. You can look at it analytically. We're going to start out by looking at it graphically. So I'm going to bring out my graphing calculator here. Turn it on. And go to my y equals. And you can see I've already got it typed in there. y equals 7 over x. So I'm going to look at the graph. Now the range is all the possible y values, all, right? all the valid y values. When looking at this, there is one y value in particular that the graph never touches and it looks like it never will. We've got a couple asymptotes, a vertical one here right at the uh, x equals 0. And it also looks like we have one right at y equals 0. So I, I kind of think of this as a force field almost where the, the graph is going to come really, really close to touching the x-axis or the y-axis here, but it's never actually going to touch it. Same thing with the x-axis. It's going to get really close, but when it gets really close, it's not going to be able to touch it. So the y values, all the possible valid y values that we're going to get out, are going to be everything except y equals zero. All right, and that's sort of just looking at it graphically. And we're going to write that down. y does not equal zero. Okay, so that would be your range, and again, you could also write an interval notation to make it look like that. Now, this is not always the most effective way to find range, so I'm going to show you another way here. So I'm going to take my function and rewrite it as y equals 7 over x. All right, so we have this function, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this. Instead of y, I'm going to solve it for x. Multiply both sides by x, xy equals 7, and then divide by y. And so what you have here is you have x equals 7 over y right here. And then you can sort of ask yourself the same questions for range that you did for domain. So you're going to ask yourself, what values of y will make me divide by 0? What values of y will give me non-real answers? And looking at this equation, x equals 7 divided by y, you can see right away that the value of y that will give you 0 in the denominator is y equals 0. So we would have to exclude y equals 0. And you can see from our answers before, we've already done that. So this is a, a very nice way to find range. It helps you look at it, not necessarily graphically, but it helps you look at it uh, analytically, which is a help sometimes. All right, so let's look at another function here and see if we can determine the range of this next function call the first one number one and the second one number two. So our new function is going to be g of x equals x plus three squared minus four. All right, so this is a quadratic function. Um, you should know that a quadratic, the general form of a quadratic, the shape is going to be a parabola. Uh, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to think about it graphically. Um, hopefully you remember your transformations from last year. But this parabola has got a couple transformations to it. It's got a, a vertical stretch of 2. It's got a horizontal shift to the left 3. And it's got a vertical shift down 4. So when finding the domain and range of this, I'm just going to think of the graph. Um, first, with the domain, there are no issues dividing by 0. And there are no issues with non-real answers because there's no square roots. So the domain of this is real easy. It's just all real numbers. Now the range. I'm well, finding the range. I'm going to think of the graph. And I'm just going to draw myself a general sketch. All 
Alright, so here's my XY coordinate plane. Alright, so I know that this is a parabola. It is upright, it's not negative. It's moved to the left three and down four. And my general shape is a parabola. I don't have to be too perfect with it because I'm just drawing a sketch to help me look at things. So here's my parabola. And again, I'm looking at the y values for the range. What are the possible y values? Well, by looking at the graph, you can see that the y values do not go down forever. There are certain y values that we're not going to have because the graph doesn't go below this point right here. So the question you need to ask yourself is, what is my smallest possible y value? And then what other y values are possible? Down here at the vertex of the parabola, your y value is negative 4. So the smallest possible y value you have is negative 4, and all the other y values are bigger than that. And this parabola will continue upward forever. So the range is going to be starting at negative 4, including negative 4, all the way to infinity. Okay. Another way you could write it is y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay. Depending on what your teacher wants, your teacher may want an interval notation or uh, inequality notation. All right, so we're going to do it another way. Same function, but just like the last one, I'm going to change it to y equals. And I'm going to solve it for x, and you'll see what happens here when you solve it for x. So first I'll add 4. Then I'm going to divide by 2. And then I've got a square root, and we always do plus or minus when we square root. And then finally, you've got to subtract 3. Oops. Okay, and we end up with that. x equals plus or minus the square root of y plus 4 divided by 2 and minus 3. Now, it's sort of the same idea for domain again. What values of y are going to cause some issues? All right, and we do have a square root this time. So we need to know what values of y are going to give us negative numbers in that square root. The divide by 2 is not going to change the positive or negative sign or anything of anything. It's just going to scale it a little bit. So the only thing that would change the positive or negative sign is the y plus 4 part. We need to have y plus 4 be greater than or equal to 0 in order to keep this from having non-real or for having imaginary solutions. Subtract 4 and you get the range of y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Just like the range that we got up here by looking at the graph. So you got a couple strategies there to find range uh, graphically. Look at the graph and see what the y, possible y values are going to be. And then also solve for x and then find, find the range just like you'd find the domain.